Hi everybody, um, I hope you, welcome back after two, your two days at uh, the Pitt Rivers. Um, <clears throat> this is the first session uh, focusing on the brief and um, we're going to look specifically at artist teacher pedagogies. Uh, the information I'm presenting in the session is based on some research that I am currently conducting into the program um, and students experiences of it uh, there's a lot of academic writing out there about how artist teachers develop their identities and about how the programs support professional development but there's far less focus on pedagogy and so that's an area that i've been exploring so um, i'm going to be drawing on my own experience but i'm also drawing on wider theory about uh, certain types of pedagogy um, and these are pedagogies that are specifically uh, uh, delivered through the ma but i think they are so they're, they're kind of representative of the way that artist teachers behave and the way that they develop their own professional practices whether that's in a studio or whether that's in a, a, a more formal or informal classroom setting um, these pedagogies are much more fluid, they embrace ambiguity and risk, and they also yield the potential for transformations and changes in professional practices, both yours and your students. Um, so it's these pedagogies that I want you to draw on when we consider how I would like you to respond to the module brief, which is what we're going to talk about in the next live session. I've embedded reflective activities into the session, so please feel free to pause uh, the recording at any point and work independently. Also make sure that any notes or responses that you make as a result of engaging with this um, resource you bring along to any live sessions. Uh, there's also a transcript um, and the PowerPoint are available on, on Moodle to supplement this. <clears throat> Okay, so now, as I'm sure that you already know, the term pedagogy refers to how we structure teaching and learning activities. Um, and much of what we do as artist teachers revolve around um, these two, two identities, the identity of the artist and the identity of the teacher. And in turn, these really inform, so the way that we think about ourselves as an artist or teacher or artist teacher informs our practices and informs our pedagogy. So the more that we begin to think about ourselves as an artist teacher, the more we begin to embrace these artist teacher approaches in the classroom and in the studio. <clears throat> Uh, so, you know, what, how we think about ourselves really informs what we do and how we do it. Um, for lots of other people, these two positions are quite separate. But for us, a select group of, of people across the country, um, uh, these two different positions are intertwined and they're quite fluidly intertwined as well. Um, so the artist teacher for the artist teacher there's a merging of different kinds of pedagogy so the pedagogy employed by the artist and the pedagogy employed by the teacher and this can result in something really quite dynamic and challenging the pedagogies embraced on this program fall under the umbrella of the term pedagogies of uncertainty which refer to several different types or different approaches to pedagogies which share a range of commonalities and these include for example they're not exclusively but they do include um, Mayer and Land's uh, threshold concepts UNESCO's four pillars framework Shulman's signature pedagogies and Thompson et al's creative pedagogies um, these pedagogies enable us to embrace dynamic, challenging and ambiguous learning spaces and ex help us to explore these spaces in relation to our own learning as well as the learning of others. In this session today, I'm going to examine the commonalities between these frameworks and relate them to artist-teacher practices, um, and uh, uh, both in terms of things that I've already experienced, uh, so drawing on my experience of working with artist teachers and working in different art educational contexts, but also in relation to asking you to reflect on the last two days. Now, when I refer to the term student, I mean you as a learner, as a new learner, as a student, but I'm also referring to those people that you teach. Um, and I'm also actually referring to myself as well. For wider reading, um, see the reference list at the end of the PowerPoint, uh, at the end of this, this presentation, and also links to reading can be found in the Aspire reading list um, accessed via the Moodle site. Okay, so let's begin at the beginning. It's important to always focus on key terms and what they mean because uh, we, we, from an academic position, we have to unpack them. Um, 
so th this slide demonstrates shows a, a, a definition of pedagogy, which is school centered, which is learner centered. It indicates that uh, educators are constantly making judgments through pedagogic processes. And this may include a conscious or an unconscious influencing of how your students engage with any number of issues, including curriculum content, learning communities and wider society. Um, we can expand this to uh, uh, embrace you as an artist teacher student um, and we can incorporate this within the artist teacher classroom. Regardless of uh, the approach, all of these pedagogies model values and they raise emotions in teachers and students as well. Um, and these factors position pedagogy as a moral act. So, for example, Shulman's signature pedagogies refer to professional learning in higher education. So this is the uh, training of medical professionals, of architects, of teachers, and so on. And he believes that it's not sufficient to learn for the sake of inquiring new knowledge, but that it has to be applied in practice and underpinned by a sense of personal and social responsibility. The pedagogy that we employ within our learning communities has far reaching implications, not just for our individual students, but for the positive generation of societies and cultures, our actions and the purpose behind them matter. And so now I want you to think about the moral implications, uh, the personal and social responsibilities that you've been asked to consider in the last two days. Um, I want you to focus on the, the curriculum content uh, and so the things that we were exploring, the subject matter that we were exploring over the last two days, the decolonization of the curriculum, uh, an anti-racist agenda, how to honor the lived experience through art production and art interpretation. Or you might want to reflect on the way that those activities, that subject matter was structured through learning activities. So asking you to work um, to develop uh, a questioning and reflective approach to your practice to respond through uh, uh, visual interpretation, not just verbal or, or spoken, a written interpretation, to be able to take risks, um, to be able to work together. I want you to take five minutes to reflect on which aspects of the last two days really resonated with you in relation to this. And feel free to, to uh, pause the video whilst you do that. The pedagogies embraced on the Artist Teacher Programme are concerned with five key things. So the first is uh, the ways of thinking about art, so the way that we interpret um, and the way we analyse and the way that we understand different concepts about art practice and, and um, visual culture. The second is ways of making and doing art, so the ways that we use the visual to better understand things and to communicate and to make new meanings. The third is the way that we teach our subject, the way that we teach art, craft and design. The fourth is the way of being an artist teacher, so the individual um, included within this is the development of new ideas and horizons of possibilities. And finally, it's uh, uh, to do with the ways that we work with others, so by forming associations, collaborations and participatory practices. Projects developed through artist teacher pedagogies really embrace the heart, which is the act of being and being together, the head, the ways we think in and through our subject, and the hand, doing and making. This is an extension of art pedagogic knowledge, which focuses on knowing how and knowing that, which is a reference from Pringle 2009. Um, and it embraces everyone's lived experience and our relationships with others, because to quote Thompson et al, what you know and do is constitutive of who you are and how you live. Um, and this is important because it actively seeks to place humanity at the centre of the, our practices. Um, to understand this in your professional setting, it's important to establish routines right from the start. Uh, when you're working with other people, this helps your, your student cohorts to understand how to respond to your expectations for their learning. If you're working with existing cohorts, without preparation, they're going to struggle to understand how rules of engagement may have changed from one pedagogical model to another if you're to implement uh, pedagogies of uncertainty for example when you return in September. Um, 
if you're working with new cohorts, then clearly it doesn't matter. You can establish these new routines right from the get-go. Shulman calls these routines habits of mind. They're yours to construct, but should focus on engagement in learning and developing students' agency, autonomy and responsibility, rather than focusing on behaviour and behaviour management. This project is an example of how habits of mind can be introduced. They're from uh, a project that I ran uh, a year or so ago, actually uh, 18 months ago. It was for a big draw project and it was with a multi-academy trust. I was working with uh, an artist. I facilitated an artist workshop and the artist worked with, actually it was Dion. Dion was our artist and she worked with, young, with children in years three, four and five and young adults working in year 12 and also BA primary students working on an initial teacher training program. We had teachers and TAs from primary and secondary education and we had a range of uh, higher education staff involved as well. The project explored the big draw theme play. Now all of the learners, all of the students, they worked together at the beginning to throw tea bags onto paper and then they were given each individually a piece of that paper and were encouraged to make marks using a range of different media. They could make marks however they wanted and they were encouraged to add a second media in called charcoal and to play with that media application imaginatively. Some people created uh, geographical landscapes or seascapes for example. Habitual routines were established during the day. Um, for example, Dion called all of those who participated in making, she called them all artists, and they were all expected to behave accordingly. And this included engaging in serious, purposeful play. Whilst media application was demonstrated by the artist, she also made it clear that the children could make choices about their own media application, which differed from hers. This was routine because it was applied to every stage of the making process and resulted in multiple outcomes, as you can see from the images. All part, um, and so another routine was the expectation that there were no right or wrong answers or responses. Finally, all participants, regardless of age or experience, had to work together to create a negotiated outcome. All participants' contributions were respected. At the end of the workshop, students were asked to solve problems, to join these pieces together into a narrative of their choosing. So there were six students who all worked together who combined their work, uh, their visual responses back together. And the participants could choose whatever they wanted it to be. So for example, in this image, you can see uh, that one group decided to construct, reconstruct their piece as a space adventure. Once the pieces have been repositioned, they then had to use the media to reinforce the narrative that they had chosen. Now, pedagogies of uncertainty generate student engagement by embracing open-ended briefs, when knowledge is limited, but actions must be taken. And this is the very definition of uncertainty. So our pedagogies of uncertainty, this embraces the uncertainty. And so by replicating it in the classroom, teachers can help students find positive ways to address ambiguity and the unknown. Sorry, the school alarm is going off. I'm just going to close my window. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so um, these approaches also support, support a co-construction of knowledge. If knowledge is limited at the beginning, the teacher becomes engaged in genuine inquiry alongside the students. And it's important that students are provided with opportunities to make genuine decisions, not ones engineered by the teacher, but ones that can be negotiated through critical reflection and collaborative problem solving, as is the case in this example. So what questions do we need to ask of the problem, the brief, the media and each other? What actions do we need to take next? What if someone disagrees? How can we negotiate and accept alternative suggestions to our own position? These are all questions that you are going to need to apply to your own research brief. In this combination of routine uh, and open-ended negotiation that creates habits of mind, where projects are habitual but pervaded by uncertainty. What habits of mind um, did you find were introduced during the last two days? 
Were there any routines or rituals that were introduced where you began to understand what was expected of you? And which activities forced you into a position of uncertainty where you were given limited information but had to act anyway? And how did that feel as a learner in those moments, especially if you hadn't been a learner for quite some time? And what happened when you stepped into the unknown? Was there a safety net? Did it matter if there was or if there wasn't? Take five minutes just to reflect on this. When learners are engaged, they're highly motivated because they feel visible. They're seen, respected, listened to, and their contributions are valued. And those are important factors for all of us. They're as important for you as a learner as they are for your learners. Were you motivated, excuse me, were you motivated by the activities of the last few days? Did you feel visible? It's important to know that visibility can come at a price. While some may thrive in the limelight, others can feel anxious and vulnerable. I know that when I make new artwork, when I expose my artist teacher self to my colleagues at work, that I feel anxious and uncomfortable. It's risky to be visible. When we make art, we enter into a conversation with the materials we're using, where media properties determine visual choices. You can do certain things with charcoal that you can't do with fabric, clearly, and vice versa. And the experience of working with different media generates sometimes deliberate and sometimes intuitive responses. The conversation between the maker and the materials may be hard to articulate at the beginning, but can help us consider the problems we're encountering without having to fully commit to our, our, our ideas. This is as true for children and young people as it is for adults. For example, the quote in this slide is taken from a piece of arts-based research that I've been conducting during lockdown, where I made art about my experience of working with the artist teacher community remotely. The point at which we commit when, we, when we're asked to present or describe our decisions to another is risky business. When presenting artworks to others, we attempt to articulate an idea or set of values that we consider worth expressing, worth experiencing, and so authentic. I've frequently experienced artist teachers' reticence when asked to share visual work, owing to pressure that this places on the, on the maker. It may come from committing to a particular understanding publicly or because the act of displaying the visual forces the student to articulate difficult, partial or unformed understandings. How did you feel when I asked you to present artworks that you, photographs of artworks that you've been creating over the last two days? Did that make you feel uncomfortable? visible in an uncomfortable or risky way. Either way, this act supports the student to recognise emotions located in the making process, the agony and the ecstasy, which generates self-awareness and haptic understanding, an act of learning through physical, through physical non-verbal means. These are fundamental capacities if we're to teach young people to grow into active members of society and are equally valuable for adult artist teachers learning to exercise their artist teacher identities. Emotion is always present in the learning process and anxiety in the face of uncertainty and risk can enhance or inhibit learning. Pedagogies of uncertainty situate fragile spaces which embrace risk because they're disruptive and challenging. They can be found in the spaces in between where troublesome knowledge lives and operate with the understanding that for learning to occur, one must have something at stake. No emotional investment means no intellectual or formational yield. Therefore, what is important is how anxiety and risk are managed. Perkins refers to the need for troublesome knowledge if the learning experience is to be transformative. What he describes as knowledge that is counterintuitive, absurd, ritualised or alien. Students need to be unsettled if they're going to make a transition in their learning when new, unfamiliar or overlooked knowledge becomes troublesome because it challenges old learnings, beliefs and values. Now, unsettling students can really be quite fun and incredibly simple. For example, to go back to the Big Draw project, using unexpected materials such as tea bags to make marks with was really exciting for the children. Or the use of the shock of the past to reveal hidden or unexpected knowledge, uh, such as the language used in the label objects, the, the labeling of objects in the Pitt Rivers Museum. Now take five minutes to consider how knowledge presented during the last two days may have been experienced as troublesome. What shocked, startled, 
fascinated, interested, intrigued you? How was it delivered and how does it engage you? Sometimes providing opportunity to represent our social worlds imaginatively is enough to trigger the unexpected. An opportunity to engage with making, freed from the shackles of assessment, can feel radical. Self-acceptance and confidence in the making process emerges from the ease of pressure to perform, opening up possibilities to think about the self and the artist teacher practices differently. These strategies are surprising because they're largely absent from our data-driven classrooms, even though they form the basis of arts pr artist practices throughout the world. By fusing serious play and student social worlds into projects, we reinforce many of the characteristics of uncertain pedagogies already discussed, making the learner visible, respecting their contributions, taking risks, and generating intrinsic motivation and agency. These acts can create trusting, dynamic learning environments. By generating a learning environment in this way, students can learn how to construct positive working relationships which address risk and uncertainty head on. And this is what Thompson et al. calls sociality. And I think sociality is at the core of the artist teacher programme. This is a place where people find and belong to a community by being visible with others who matter to them. When troublesome communities of learning are generated in any learning space, they support students to explore and shape their identities. The development of this environment becomes the responsibility of the educator and the learners together. It can be generated by giving students a genuine part to play in shaping creative practices, learning how to collaborate, listen and negotiate and take responsibility for the learning that occurs. This places students in a much stronger position to address anxiety by building resilience and uses risk as a way to inform judgments and opinions and provoke students' agency. Now, my experience of sociality is found in my work, uh, in my work with artist teachers and alumni from the MA programme. So they tell me that the programme is transformative and through research examining why this is, I've learned that there are three key things that the programme generates sociality, visibility and engagement. Sociality in this context refers to the space of belonging where values, identities and practices shape and are shaped by those who participate in it, by you. Visibility increases as your voices are heard, your practices are valued and you develop a critical voice through academic study. And engagement is demonstrated through the pedagogical structures which are built around habits of mind, so the briefs that are set, the structure of the sessions, and so on. Curriculum content always remains fluid. This is the ambiguous, the uncertain element. It's up to you to decide what that content is. As I write in an upcoming article, community is constituted through imagination because the feelings of commonality which, are sustained, which can sustain networks require each individual to hold an image of that community. Feelings of belonging are crucial. To belong to a community implies that each member acts as agent, participant and collaborator. When MA students are engaged in the community, they're highly motivated because they feel visible, they're seen, listened to and their contributions valued. They're co-creators actively working together to generate something new. Embedding pedagogies of uncertainty into teaching contexts can be as easy or as difficult as you want to make it. And here are some recommendations for getting started that can help you with interpreting the module brief. Start small, a short project, an artist workshop, a trip to a gallery, a two week project in a classroom. Work with a low risk group. Uh, this could be a non exam group, for example, an art club, a group of students who are willing to experiment with you. Decide on your habits of mind in advance and introduce them consistently with that group. These will reflect your values, so think them through carefully. Reflect on what happens when you implement them with students. Reflection is so important. Consider throughout the process what works. What do you want to modify? What do you need to modify? How do relationships, behaviours or learning responses change? Trust is also crucial, and that comes through the work with, with your students. Talk to them about your ideas and discuss how they want to be included. Negotiate the content together. 
It might not work first time round. Don't worry, that's fine. Failure is part of the learning process. Just discuss this with your students. Sometimes being visible and taking risks involves you being visible as well as, the, as your learners. How can you work together to improve it? Above all, don't be afraid to embrace troublesome knowledge and uncertainty. You're already living with it every day, especially as we've all learned as a result of the pandemic. By creating a trustful, respecting, respectful and dynamic learning environment, you're harnessing uncertainty to generate something new and positive. I'll see you in the next session to discuss this further.